In this video, I'm going to show you how to do half-life problems. Now, half-life problems, the first thing is, is that a half-life is the time for one half of a sample to decay. And later on, we're going to do a kinetics, and it turns out that a half-life is what's called a first-order reaction, which is the rate of the radiation, in this case, is equal to some rate constant times the amount that you have. And we do uh, kinetics later on, a first order rate law looks like K times uh, the concentration to the first power, the first power being implied there. Now, to do these uh, half-life equations, we need these equations down here. First off, if we wanna calculate the disintegrations per second, we have to find K and then multiply that times however much we have, however many grams, milligrams, or whatever. Now, the basic equation is the natural log of the ratio between what you end up with over what you start with is equal to the rate constant times however much time has gone by. And we can use this at that if we have uh, three of the four variables, we can figure out the other one by rearranging or using the fact that uh, e to the ln is equal to whatever's inside. So like e to the e to the x, if we take um, e to the ln of x, then that's x, all right? So, erase that. And so that's your basic equation over here is, is in fact, uh, the ln of nt over n0 equals minus kt. Now, very important equation over here is k equals 0.693 over t1 half, and the 0.693 is actually, this equation up here is ln of one half. So one half of at nt over n naught, if you take the natural log of that, you get 0.693, which is why this is over t1 half. And so if you have the half-life, you can get the rate constant, or k. And if you have k, you can get the half-life. And so that's important if you're trying to either calculate the half-life or you need to find k to plug into the re relative uh, relevant equation. And then finally, this one's not on the formula sheet, but if you take the second equation up here, this one right there, and raise everybody to the e, then you can rearrange it. You'll get nt over n naught equals e to the minus kt, and then you just solve for nt. And there you go. And this one's pretty useful because if you know the half-life, you can find the k, and if you know how much you started out with, you can find how much you have left after a period of time. And also, you can do the other way. If you know if you know uh, the half-life, you can calculate k, and you can find out well how much did you have to start out with. If you know nt, then you can then you can solve for n zero and so forth. So this one I think is a particularly these two guys in particular are very useful uh, in doing our equations. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our first example, which would be right over here. It should pop up. There it goes. Um, that's one. There's two. Here it is. Okay, so we have an example here. It takes four hours, 39 minutes for a two milligram sample of radium-230 to decay to 0.25 milligrams. What is the half-life? Well, let's think about how we're going to do this. And so, first off, it looks like we're going from 2 milligrams to 0.2 mil 0.25 milligrams. So I think what we need to find the half-life is we're going to have to figure out um, what's K. And so the relevant equation would be ln of n at time t, well that would be the 0.25 milligrams over the 2 milligrams, that's time at time 0, that's the amount at time 0, and that's equal to minus kt, and we know what t is. And so we have three three of the quantities. We have n at time t, we have n at time 0. We have the time, we just need the k, because we're going to need this k for t1 half is 0.693 over k. And so we do one, and then we do the other. 
So many of these problems are two step problems. Most of them, matter of fact, you have to do one or the other um, and then plug in. And so if we take this, we can rearrange now since I have since I'm looking for K, let's rearrange the first equation. And so we say ln of nt over n naught is equal to K and don't forget that minus sign needs to come over here because we're just looking for K. We're not looking for minus K, we're looking for K. And so if we do that, we can go ahead and plug in our number. Oh, and don't forget that it's over T. There we go. And so we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. And so we say minus LN of uh, 0.25 over the original 2.0 milligrams. And then we can divide by the time. Now the time we need to convert into uh, hour into minutes. And so the time is going to be four times 60. That's 60 minutes, four hours at 60 minutes plus 39 minutes. And that would give us uh, 279 minutes. And so that's what we would plug over here. We take say 279 minutes. And there it is now plug that in our calculator and we get 7.453 times 10 to the minus 3 and that's our K. Now it's as simple as let's go ahead and use our second equation up there and we say 0.693 over the K that we just found And that gives us 93 minutes. So there's our answer. So we used our first equation to figure out uh, what do we have as far as K goes, because we don't have the time. We, we know the time, but we, we don't know what K is. And we know what how much we have left and we know how much we started with. We always are going to have to need either the K or the time one half or the half-life. We're going to need one or the other for practically all problems. Because either you're given a half-life, you're going to find a K, or you're given the K, or you have to calculate the K to find a T one half or time or the half-life. And so there you go, there you go. It's 93 minutes. All right. Let's go to our next example. All right. So now we're given the half-life and how much we started with, and we want to know how much we're left with. And that's going to uh, involve, uh, once again, our 0.693 over T1 half, this time to find a K, okay? And so the first thing we have to do when we have a half-life is we have to find, it, find K. And so K is uh, 0.693, which by the way, 0.693 is ln of 1 half, over t one half the half life, and once we have that, then we can plug into our other equation, which was n at times t. How much do you have? Is n at times zero? How much you start with? Times e to the minus kt, which is the time that has elapsed, and that would be your second equation that you would use. So once again, you're either finding k or you're finding finding the uh, half life. Uh, in most cases. And so let's go ahead and find K. And so we say 0 0.693 over T one half, which is 12.3 years. That's equal to K. And we plug that in our calculator and we get a K of 0 0.05634. That's our K. Now we can go ahead and plug it into our second equation and we say that n at time t, which is the amount of time t, is however much you started out with, which is um, which is 12.5 micrograms and we say times e to the minus the k that we just found 0 0.05634 times the time, which is 38 years. And we plug that in our calculator and we get 1.47.
micrograms after 38 years. So once again, we have a two-step problem going on here. Um, generally, you're going to have to either find K, find T1 half, the half-life, and then you're going to plug it into the re relevant equation to figure out what you want. All right, well, let's do another example, which would be our third example. And it will be our last example. And so this is uh, radiocarbon dating. Uh, it's a pretty classical uh, half-life problem. It's actually used practically to figure out how old ancient artifacts are within a certain amount of time. And so we have a standard sample wood, otherwise known as new wood, has 12.6 counts per second from carbon-14. And then we're going to compare it to an ancient sample, which has 3.7 counts per second coming from the artifact. All right. So the first thing we need to do is to find K. We have a half-life. We're given that. As soon as we see that we have a half-life, we should go ahead and find K. And that's, that's easy peasy. So we say K is equal to 0.693 divided by that half-life, which is 57, 14 years. And that gives me 1.213 times 10 to the minus fourth. That's my K. And so now I want to figure out, well, how old is it? Well, in that case, uh, we go back to our standard equation, which is ln of n at times t over n at times 0. And that's equal to minus kt. Well, I have n at times t. Well, that's the counts. Counts is directly proportional to the amount that you have there. So that's 3.7 counts per second. And I have n0. That's the counts. It's proportional how much you have. It doesn't matter that it's grams, milligrams, or counts. Um, and that's 12.6 counts per second. And I have the k. I just found the k. So all I have to do is rearrange this to find time for how much time has elapsed. So now, just like the first problem, we're going to rearrange it. But this time, we're looking for time instead of, instead of k. And that is over k. And it's minus equals time. There's no such thing as negative time. And so now, we're going to plug in our numbers for uh, what we have, which is minus ln of, well, let's see, what did we start out with? We had 12.6. We ended up with 3.7. And then we're going to divide by the k that we just found. 1.213 times 10 to the minus fourth. And then we plug that in our calculator, and we get 10,000. 104 years. And if you look up there, if you see, is you know, it's 12.6 going to 3.7. Well, let's see, one half-life would be about six. Two half-lives would be about three. So it is, it is around two half-lives. And so that would be two times 57 is right around 10,000 or so years. So this answer makes a lot of sense. So that's how you do um, the... Uh, half-life problems, or at least some of them. You can always throw in wrinkles like how many counts do you have per after 300 seconds, in which case you'd have to figure out how many atoms you have and how many are disintegrating. And so that's it. There you go. And we will stop recording.